Thank you, uh, Nina, for taking the time to chat to me and to the rest of the sort of hedge community today and doing this interview. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to do this. Um, today's focus is your recently completed research project, Effects of Migration, Evidence from Historical Denmark. I thought it would be nice uh, to begin if you could just tell us a little bit about your motivation for this work and how you came to be interested in this topic more generally. Yes, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for having me. Um, it's always a, a pleasure to get the opportunity to talk about uh, <laughs> my or one's work. Um, so yeah, this uh, project was my uh, postdoc project, which was uh, funded by the Independent Research Fund Denmark. And uh, yeah, as the title already says, uh, I studied uh, the effects of migration and used uh, historical Denmark as an example. And um, I think from that, you can already see sort of two points in my motivation. So the first point is why uh, study migration um, and the other one or historical migration. Um, and then why to study Denmark in, in this context. Um, and for migration, I think, um, I mean, it is of course, one of the really big topics of today um, mm -hmm. and will also continue uh, to be in the future. Um, and here, I think we can really uh, learn from history. Um, so in that sense, um, uh, the, the age of mass migration, which, uh, which is the topic here. So um, uh, sort of massive migration flows in, in uh, late 19th and early uh, 20th century uh, really provide a, a really great example to, to study migration because it's, um, it's a period of, of uh, migration flows that haven't been seen before or after. Uh, and also because it's a period of, of unregulated uh, migration, which we otherwise also usually don't have. Mm. Um, so uh, as I mean, with all these points, of course, it's a period that has been studied extensively. Um, so that's not, not the main uh, new point maybe, but uh, then the question goes on to why I study Denmark and Denmark hasn't been studied uh, so much uh, for this period. Um, and that's also because um, Denmark is quite small, <laughs> um, uh, but nevertheless, it, it provides actually a very interesting uh, case. Um, so one thing is that um, Denmark is, of course, today, or Scandinavia, uh, is um, yeah, one of the richest regions uh, in the world. It uh, has very high levels of education, uh, high levels of equality, income equality, but also equality of opportunity. Um, so in that sense, it's always interesting to, uh, to find out uh, how we got there. Um, but uh, also if, um, so that's seen uh, looking at Denmark today, but if we the two points together, uh, Denmark and migration, um, then it's actually quite interesting that um, Denmark didn't see these very high rates of uh, immigration as its neighbors did. So, um, Sweden and, and especially Norway. Um, so for Denmark, it was like around 16% of the population which emigrated, which is also a lot, mm -hmm. but not as much as compared to Norway, which had uh, yeah almost 40% uh, mm -hmm. of the population leaving. Um, so it's still uh, an important uh, factor, of course, um, but it is one of the reasons why it hasn't been studied uh, so much. Um, and um, my project was about emigration, um, but also about immigration. And the, uh, Denmark is actually also quite interesting because it had a very uh, productive agricultural sector during the time. So it was actually when, while other countries were seeing this massive outmigration, uh, is it uh, actually also had some immigration. Um, so it was importing labor to the um, agricultural sector. Thank you, Nina. That's, uh... A really fascinating introduction to the, the, the project, to the motivations, and a sort of situation of why it is you're looking at Denmark, an area which appears to have not received the academic attention of some other nations. So I really appreciate you uh, sort of contextualizing it a little bit. I thought as my next question, what might be helpful if we could historicize somewhat. 
So get a sense of, you know, what is going on in Denmark across the period you're studying uh, geographically, socially, politically, so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, so um, I think uh, in, in a very short sentence, we can say lots of things uh, were going on. It was a period of, of great change. Um, the period of migration or especially emigration that I was just talking about is mainly from the middle of the 19th uh, century. Um, but the project actually starts um, around 1800, I would say. So we start mm -hmm. with um, uh, looking at the land reforms in Denmark. Uh, which meant that um, land was uh, consolidated or farms consolidated their land, um, uh, which then, as we show, uh, um, led to a period of, of rapid population growth. And um, because the number of farms were kept rather fixed, uh, this meant that um, in a still agricultural society, of course, uh, that a large group of people was created who didn't have uh, access to land. Um, so uh, over then over the 19th century, uh, these, uh, this group of people, of course, became more and more uh, unsatisfied with their situation. Um, so that, of course, also led to all sorts of uh, political uh, pressure and change, but that's not really the, the focus of the project. We focus more on the, the outside option these people had, because then we show that um, actually a lot of, uh, or the, to a large extent, the emigration that we see uh, from around 1860, uh, 1880, it really picks up, are exactly those people who lost out on the uh, land reforms. That's super interesting. Um, so um, that's on the side of immigration. Then I would also mention, which is also very relevant uh, to the project, is the uh, period of technological progress. Um, so um, as I mentioned, um, Denmark was very strong in, in agriculture. Um, and especially in dairying. Uh, and here around 1880, um, we had some innovations and technological progress, which uh, really transformed the uh, agricultural uh, sector in, in Denmark um, and moved uh, production from home production on the farms to uh, um, uh, cooperative like, first factories. Um, and this change was very uh, rapid and, of course, had large consequences for, for development. Um, and it's also something that we use then uh, in the paper of migration. That's, uh, yeah, we will go on to talk about, I think, because we show how that uh, uh, technological progress was also um, transferred uh, to other countries through the migrants. Very interesting stuff. I guess there's... Uh... We have a story of class formation. We have a story of sort of, what do you say, deepening of technological use within production. So in a sense, there's parallels here with many other developing countries. But of course, the, the, the out migration story is one that your project takes a particular uh, interest in. And I think it might be beneficial now to, to sort of focus. Now we have a broad view of what's going on to look a little bit deeper at some of the, the papers that came out of this work. Yeah. As far as I understand it, there's, a, there's some that focus on the receiving country and some that mm -hmm. focus on the sending country. It'd be cool if we could start with the receiving country. I know that you, uh, you and uh, colleagues have looked at Danish immigrants to the US and their impact on the dairy industry. Could you talk us through that a little bit, what you found? Yeah. Uh, yes, so that's yeah, that's a project uh, joined with Paul Sharp, um, and um, yeah, it connects to what I, I just uh, said basically. So uh, in that project, um, we uh, study the impact of Danish migrants on the U.S. economy. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, they were actually a small group of immigrants, and they were not. Um, uh, yeah, they didn't, uh, they never made up a, a, a significant part of the American uh, uh, population. Uh, they were also nothing uh, particular in terms of their um, education. Um, yeah, or they were also not, not particularly uh, wealthy. Um, but what we show in this project is that uh, nevertheless, they had a, a, a measurable effect on the uh, American economy. Um, 
So what we show is, or we use this example of uh, technological uh, advances happening in Denmark, uh, and then uh, show how Danes uh, took this knowledge with them to, um, uh, to the US. Okay. Um, yeah, and then we show that uh, areas that received more Danes, um, they, uh, they uh, specialized more into dairying, uh, but also used more uh, modern uh, production techniques. Interesting stuff. So although we're talking about a relatively small group of people who, I guess, under sort of typical conditions, as you say, that they're not bringing heaps of capital, human or otherwise, with them, still made a very, uh, very significant difference. Right, at the, at the farm yeah. level. Yeah, and actually, I mean, what we show is that um, how an existing uh, immigrant uh, community uh, can have positive effects also decades after uh, they migrated. And even though they were not particularly uh, desirable <laughs> in the beginning, uh, they turned out to be uh, beneficial for the, for the economy later on. Okay, so we're also talking about yeah. persistence here as well. Yeah, yeah, actually, I mean, we show also, um, I mean, the main analysis is uh, from uh, 1870 to 1920, uh, mm -hmm. but we show that this, um, I mean, once these areas specialized in dairying, they are still the ones uh, who are strong in dairying today. Okay, yeah. very, very, uh, <clears throat> all the kind of stuff that we love within econ history, I suppose, <laughs> yeah. path dependency and persistence and all this, maybe we could... Um, <laughs> You know, be a little bit nerdy and delve into some of the the, the mechanisms and you know how it has sort of the the methodological approaches the sources you utilized for this work yeah uh, so for this project we mainly used uh, census data mm -hmm. um, so that's um, us census data from from icons uh, but also agricultural census data um, uh, on the number of cows, for example, dairy cows, uh, or also dairy cows in relation to other cows not used for dairying, um, and manufacturing sensors to see uh, also the, the industrial uh, side of dairying. Um, and we combine this data um, with Danish uh, sources on emigrants. So from Denmark, from the um, uh, emigration database, we have sort of a, a list of all uh, emigrants uh, leaving Denmark um, and very often also reporting their occupation. And um, I mean, a good thing is also, or a nice thing about this is that very often the majority actually knew exactly where they would go in the US. Uh, so we can use that to um, sort of filter out or, or see, is it the, the regular Dane that makes a difference or is it a Dane that was already specialized in dairying in Denmark? Um, and what we find is that it's actually uh, all Danes who can be transmitters of this knowledge because they kept contact with the home country and observed what was happening uh, in Denmark at the time. Um, <clears throat> about the method, uh, we implemented difference and differences design here. Um, so for that, you need two differences. <laughs> so we uh, compare uh, counties who received no or very few Danes to those who received many Danes. Um, and then uh, the second difference we use um, <clears throat> sort of 1880 as a cutoff because before that um, <clears throat> Danes had no particular knowledge uh, of daring um, and only afterwards, oh, sorry. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> only after the um, technological advances happened in Denmark uh, were they um, possible transmitters of, of knowledge. Okay, really interesting stuff. And that, mm -hmm. that, that emigrant data set sounds particularly useful and very rich and like something I imagine you yeah. were yeah. very happy to have uh, to have come across while putting together this work. Yes, I'm yeah. searching for your own family. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It'd be interesting now to sort of, um, I guess, you know, sort of flip the perspective a bit because I know that you also did work looking at the impact on the sending country, which of course, in this case, in this project would be Denmark. So could you, uh, you know, give us a little bit of a primer of what, what you discovered there? Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, that's sort of the, the, the other side, uh, looking at the sending uh, country. And um, as I already mentioned, um, 
uh, a large uh, share of the the immigrants were these uh, came from this um, unprivileged group or this group of uh, uh, people who who lost access to to land uh, or who didn't have access to land they didn't lose it but the, the land reforms created this uh, group of people um, so um, what we then look at is um, uh, look at the effect of the sending parish. Um, and here we can look at uh, income tax data um, to sort of, yeah, to, to see if there's an effect on incomes uh, from immigration. And what we find is that uh, having this outside option of emigrating um, was not only beneficial for the receiving country and probably most likely also the, the immigrants, uh, but actually also for the um, sending parishes. So releasing this population pressure uh, meant um, uh, actually positive effect on incomes as measured by the number of taxpayers. So of course, not everyone was paying tax it was above a certain threshold. Um, and also the total uh, taxable income increased. Mm -hmm. um, Is that because there's less competition between laborers? Yeah, that's of course a question. Uh, what's the mechanism here? And uh, that requires some more work, I have to say. <laughs> um, but that could be one part of the story that um, uh, having uh, labor emigrating um, maybe might also uh, lead to um, more investment in capital, for example. So a substitution between capital and labor, for example, mm -hmm. um, could be one yeah. mechanism. Yeah. I mean, that. I guess that brings us nicely to our, to our final question of the interview, which actually is sort of focused on some of the, the things you'd like to move on to next, the prospects for this work and what you hope to be researching going forwards. Yes. Uh, so um, what's nice about research is whenever you delve into one uh, story, then you find uh, new things uh, <laughs> that uh, can be uh, investigated. Um, so the same, of course, with this project. So um, we still have one project which came out of this, um, looking a bit more at the um, migrants in the US, um, where um, uh, we want to use again uh, the census data and um, also combine it again with the immigration lists of where they came from to see, um, to look at uh, their integration. And what's, what's interesting here is actually, um, also another point for why Denmark is interesting, uh, it's often displayed as this very homogeneous uh, country or a homogeneous population. Um, so I already said that actually Denmark had, had been seeing immigration for quite a long time. Um, but the second point is that um, it had actually a, a religious uh, conflict, uh, quite fierce religious conflict going on at the time. Um, and these two groups, uh, they had very different approaches to uh, integration. Um, so what we want to look at, we also know um, uh, where the churches of these uh, two uh, rivaling religious groups were in the US. Uh, so uh, what we want to look at is um, how the, the immigrants took this conflict with them to the US and how it uh, affected their uh, integration and their economic success. Sounds like a fascinating project um, and look forward to maybe speaking to you about that again when uh, when work is taken off on that. But for today, I'll just say yeah. thank you so much for mm -hmm. taking the time to speak with us and share some of your findings. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you.